There's really a massive amount of potential start dates for EU4. We got 1356, we got 1444, 1453, but there's one start date that would really pose a very interesting question and dilemma. What if EU4 started in 2022? That's right, we're using the modern day mod for EU4, not extended timeline, and this mod definitely has revamped the way the game works since this is your actual start date and you unlock technologies from this date including nuclear missiles and the sorts so let's get into this and see what happens first thing that kind of uh, caught my eye is the fact that a lot of nations are military bases of the united states so we have germany that only has 800 development as a military base of the u.s france also has its own military bases and only has 830 dev the uk 750 development and also has its own military bases i'm really curious to know why germany was set as a military base of the u.s let's check the u.s for that 5,000 development as the u.s wow uk and israel the only allies and the following military bases basically a massive amount of nations it's pretty accurate to be fair let's click on the u.s see how these are represented all right so this is where the u.s has military bases well technically romania also hosts US military bases so why is that not shown on this map I have my first beef already okay let's see what it looks like from France's perspective yeah they mainly have African areas as uh, military bases Italy is guaranteeing the independence of the Vatican all right so in this mod we actually have the small nations like the Vatican over here Andorra trapped in between the French and the Spanish we even have the breakaway strip of Transnistria that uh, is essentially an unrecognized uh, nation which split apart from Moldova. Interesting to see how uh, Russia has 2,000 development. And let's check China. 3,500. Interesting. 900 for Japan. And 500 for Australia. Let's uh, hop in and see what happens in the actual game. The first thing that pops into my eye is the fact that the development map mode is insanely weird. I mean, there's provinces in Germany that literally have three development. I'm not entirely sure that's accurate. I mean, I get it some parts are more rural and stuff but still i don't think frankfurt is six development when frankfurt's one of the biggest and most important economic centers in europe just as an example same goes for a lot of other cities here in germany i'm guessing maybe they just have not finished doing the uh, development map mode for this uh, mod i really don't know the interface is very different also we have dollars in our treasury here and they changed the pause screen and a few other things around map wise it is surprisingly accurate even have the Houthis as a separate country that is at war with the uh, cabinet of Yemen to show off the uh, civil war that is happening in Yemen and that has been happening for quite a few years now Ethiopia surprisingly does not have any sort of rebellion or anything of the sorts from what I can tell sure there's still some skirmishes going on around there and something that I also feel is not really entirely correct is the fact that Kashmir is divided between India and Pakistan realistically speaking parts of this would also be given out to China because Kashmir is one of the most contested areas in the world with uh, Pakistan, India and China all three wanting a piece of this essentially. What's happening in Afghanistan? Panjshir is Khorasan and the rest is Afghanistan. Is this something that's... Oh, this is the Panjshir Valley. I thought that the Panjshir Valley was captured by the Taliban by now. Maybe I'm wrong. This is from March 2022, so it's not from... Uh, August, right? It's a month ago, I guess. Must have been really hard to actually do the borders of countries like Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan here, where it's an absolute mess. Have to say that it is pretty accurate, the fact that Qatar has got 45 dev in uh, the capital here, and that there's US troops in here. 10 units is probably not enough though. The US has a massive amount of units in Qatar. They actually use the units from Qatar to invade Iraq. Western Sahara also seems to be an independent nation. If you guys didn't know, Morocco considers this strip here a part of its country, but they don't actually have full control over this area. They consider themselves an independent country and they have a little bit of a separatist situation, let's call it. It's definitely a touchy subject if you talk to Morocco about it so let's check out what it's actually like starting in the start date as the united states definitely the strongest of all nations they have 3.07 thousand ducats 
per month. One point two thousand is from their vassals, apparently, amongst which are Japan, Germany, Egypt, Poland. Oh God! So that military base uh, sort of uh, situation is actually a vassal of uh, the U.S. All right. I see what's going on here. I see where this is leading to. I'm not saying it's wrong because there is some truth to this. I don't think that they're vassal states, though. I mean, it's not like these countries act. Well, no, actually, they do give money to the U.S. having those troops in their countries. That is true, but they don't cover the entire expense of the troops. So I don't know. It's a weird situation. Definitely a very touchy subject. So I'm gonna pretend I didn't see the fact that all of these nations are portrayed as vassals of the U.S. Oh god, even Australia? Apparently the military controls 70% of the estates in the United States. It's kind of like the budget of the US, isn't it? Why have free healthcare when you can just buy another Apache AH-64 helicopter? Let's go! I like that they actually changed the uh, icon while like you have these units that look so freaking cool. Wait, is that Comitatense? What? Why do they have Roman legionnaire names for the unit? What? Leopard 2 tanks? Okay, that is the German tank tank, isn't it? What the actual schnapps is happening here? So we got technology 11 and we can go all the way up to um, 85. So this mod, you start in 2022, you can end up playing up until 25 something. So 500 years or so, give or take, maybe more, maybe more. Curious to see how much the uh, morale will end up being at the end of this uh, game, since you start with 9. I have to say that army tradition wise, they should start with 50 at least army tradition in the US, since the US has pretty high amounts of army tradition. Mission tree, nothing done, I've noticed for most of the nations, but there are a massive amount of decisions to be enacted here, like stop nuclear research, stop hydride, what? What? Hydrogen research, I guess? Panama Canal taxes, Suez Canal taxes. Wow, that is a lot to take in. I'm thinking of actually doing a multiplayer game with this mod, right? Like where we get players in most of these nations and we have a little bit of fun. So if you guys are interested in that, check out my Discord. I'll have a link of my Discord in the description below. Join that up and check the announcement section. I should make an announcement about this around mid-September or so. One missile with 500 kilometers range of 1,500. Oh, so you can buy them. Let's pay for one missile with the 1,500 range. Where's my missile at? Where are my missile at, bro? I want to see the missile. Where is it? I don't know where my missile's at. <laughs> also, why is the Iranian tank the highest technology tank? <laughs> What, what What's the meaning of all this? Hold on a second. Is Joe Biden actually 79 years old? Get out of here. He definitely is not 79. I'm actually curious now. Holy mother of God. This dude actually is 79 years old. He was born in 1942. Bruh. For real? Is he like the oldest president the United States has ever had? I cannot believe he's 79. This man was born during the Second World War, bro. Are you for real? Okay, so that shock aside, not gonna lie, it was a shock. Let's actually get back into this mod and focus on what's happening here. I want to see the culture map mode. Let's see what they did here. We have Dixie in the south, American in the north here, Western American. Okay. Now, all my American people that watch the video, let me know in the comments. Is this accurate? Or do you feel like Western American is not accurate? Maybe they should add some Midwestern culture, like, I don't know, Texan maybe or something of the sorts. I'm really curious what you guys think. Like, for example, if we're gonna divide it like that, right? Either make it Yankee Dixie or add a separate one for this area in New England, which is honestly very different from the rest of the US, at least from when I traveled in the US. I felt both from an educational standpoint as well as from an architectural point of view, everything was different here, man. Like, the people behaved differently, the cities looked differently so um look how big this anglo-saxon culture group is though like the british culture group right you got all of north america you got the uh, british isles parts of he guyanese what that would not really be british though is it and then we also have the australians and new zealand it's amazing how from a small little island that nobody would have paid much attention to the greatest empire ever was eventually created and now we have all of these different cultures that sprang out out of it. Meanwhile, my broski's here in Romania. Wait, what? Why is Romania in the same culture group as Slovak? Oh, God. What is happening here? This is... N no! 
We're not even closely related. Slovaks are like basically the same like Czechs. Same culture group as Czechs, sir. Please, please fix. My eyes are bleeding right now. <laughs> Hungarians are separate. That makes sense. Apparently, they're in the same culture group with the Bulgars here. I didn't even know there still are Bulgars in Russia. And then there's the big old uh, Rush there. The Bulgarians. Ohrid. Why is half of Macedonia Byzantine Macedonian? What? I'm having a lot of issues with this mod already. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna not look at the culture map mode so that I can actually enjoy the mod because the inner historically accurate person in me is gonna explode like a volcano if I keep looking at that culture map mode. Let's see what development's really high in the US. Apparently the east coast is mostly super high development and I guess also the Californian areas. Yes sir. 55 in Los Angeles development. Not bad. Did they change the idea sets? They did. We got nuclear research, military base, satellite research, missile researches, weapon quality researchers that's a lot of different stuff oh my god holy mother of god this is so many idea groups man there's so many of them and they're so different from the base ones holy snaps hydrogen research so once you finish this what you get hydrogen bombs yes initial construction of hydrogen bombs plus 15 innovativeness <laughs> it's only 15 mana points to increase our stability what that is so cheap man ah there we go boys we can create marine and Infantry, special infantry, professional war machine, professional infantry as well, and we have the Comitatense Stratiotoi Leopard 2 tank. Mercenary wise, we have the Grand Comp. We have okay, we have the Navajo Raiders, guys. Let's let's just recruit the Navajo Raiders as the United States. I think that's accurate, and then we can design our template here. We got the tanks, the transport. I'm guessing this is the mechanized infantry, the regular infantry, and the artillery is the tanks basically. I like it. I like the way that they change the stuff we also get Karax. okay this is an aircraft carrier we have 87 does the u.s actually have 87 aircraft carriers you know what i'm googling this okay so google is telling me that they have 11 aircraft carriers right now not 87 as of 2021 there are an estimate 46 air helicopter carriers in service worldwide with the u.s having 11 aircraft carriers and nine helo carriers oh my dear lord my eyes are bleeding look at the amount of buildings we can actually build we start with storehouse work our way all the way into factories small nuclear plant nuclear plant and fusion react wow wow we wow. that is a lot of dev cost reduction from these uh, fusion reactors and goods produced production efficiency and tax modifier then army wise we got a lot of them as well we got airports that increase friendly movement speed plus 25 then we got the good old tax assessor from uh, eu3 if you guys didn't play you three that was a pretty big deal back then courthouses the same stuff as before but we also have universities that lower the uh dev cost by quite a little bit more however if activated they increase the state maintenance by 50 percent because universities be expensive and stuff makes sense we also have missile sites that increase attrition for enemies atomic sites anti-atomic bomb what is an anti-atomic bomb friendly movement speed plus 30 what I'm building me one of these. Why can I not build it? I don't have the money for it. Anti-missile as well. Friendly movement speed plus 15. Hails to the yeah, bowling green. You're lucky you're getting the first anti-missile silo, I guess, or emplacement in the United States. We still have the good old furnaces, soldiers' households, and the regular manufactories. And I'm curious if there's any difference between the different types of soldiers. So I built a special one here. Let's build a marine, professional war machine, professional soldier, leopard 2 tank, and all of these guys i just want to check what's different between them my president the nationalist party has gained a dominant position in our country well that's not surprising that means we'll change our policy morale of armies plus fit oh oh i love the nationalist party holy mother of god we got the conservative the communist and the liberal party wait where's the nationalist can we scroll down or something oh we can oh that's a lot of them national so oh, what the national socialist party exists isn't this outlawed in the u.s i i am not gonna google this i trust that the u.s is not gonna make the mistake of not outlawing this party here so apparently every single party gives different bonuses here conservative party is the worst one apparently <laughs> and we also have the european union oh the european union is what <laughs> luxembourg's the emperor okay let's see what the european imperial map mode looks like hold on a second why is ukraine a part of the europe okay you know what this mod historical accuracy zero i said it zero historical accuracy okay why would you put ukraine a part of 
of the European Union. It's not. I have a strong suspicion this mod is still a work in progress or they're just doing it intentionally to trigger me. Taiwan wants to open an embassy. Okay, let's open an embassy with Taiwan. Uh, I'm also curious, what does that even mean? Open embassy. Oh my god, look at all the diplomatic options. Atomic attack, missile attack. This action will not launch the missile straight away, but you will get to choose the target province first. Ooh. All right, let's send 1,500 kilometers. We have 30. What? How many missiles do we have? <gasps> Too many missiles. That's how many. Oh my lord. Use the missile. What happens if we use the missile? Choose the target. Accept the donations. Five corruption. No, thank you. Yeah, it's not letting me do that. Maybe I need to be at war with that country. Let's just casually declare war on uh, the Chinese, communist China. And let's, uh, let's do the missile attack on them. That would be a little bit more fitting than attacking Taiwan, who we're supposed to be protecting here. Oh, Taiwan's one of my military bases, isn't it? No, it's guaranteed by me. I was close enough with that. <laughs> All right, let's do an atomic attack. 5,000 kilometers. Use it. There you go. We can choose now. So capital G Chen. Let's do it. Launch atomic atomic bomb. What happens? My president, United States, dropped an atomic bomb on China City. It's a very dangerous event. World War Three may break out. I mean, I'm pretty sure we started World War Three because of, you know, attacking China in the first place. <gasps> Oh lord, had like 40 develop- it le it destroyed this! It's 3 development, 100 devastation, it completely crushed them. I want to use this again. Let's see what's their highest development city. So they got- they got this province 55, Shanyin. Let's attack Shanyin, boys. Have to mention, quite surprised with the fact that the game's running pretty smooth. I'm not getting any lag, I'm not getting any sort of uh, problems with it so far at least. Let's go attack, atomic attack, let's use our 7000 kilometers range 1 and and we're gonna go for the province of Shenyin. Where is Shenyin? It's just around. Oh, I cannot choose. I cannot choose. Wait, what if I click more options? I can. Kai Feng. Where's Kai Feng? All right. So Kai Feng is over here. It has 60 development. Boom. Let's go. Launch atomic bomb. Three development from 60 and 100 devastation. Oh my God. I love this mod. Seriously, guys, we have to do a multiplayer game with this. I absolutely want to do a multiplayer game with this. This is gonna be so much freaking fun. Open embassy with everybody. Sure. Come on. Boy. Boys, let's let's all be friends. It's not like I've just attacked someone new. Let's attack the Turks. Can I attack them without being at war? That would be so pepega if I could. Oh my god, I can't. Let's attack the capital. 40 development. Launch. Ah! I can literally attack. I can destroy everybody's development without being at war. Are you serious? That is Pepega, bro. Let's attack the Russians. Atomic attack. Boom. Uh, 10,000 kilometers range. Let's go. Moskva. How much development does Moskva have? It has 55. Nope. No, it has three development. <laughs> This is insane! And I'm not even at war with them, bro. What? I Stop nuclear research. Let's attack the Russians to stop them from doing that horrible nuclear research. We, we don't want anyone else except us to have nuclear missiles for obvious reasons. <laughs> Can you imagine in the real world if you could just attack nations like this with the nuclear bomb without being at war? And then if they say anything, you're, you're just like, yo, Shut up. I'm gonna kill you again, okay? Just be quiet. <laughs> it's kind of why everybody is the U.S.'s bitch right now. I'm, I mean, it's kind of why everybody um, is allied to the U.S. is what I wanted to say. Please don't send the CIA to kill me. I love you guys. Please, no. I promise I'll be a very nice military base. <laughs> Let's see these special units now, because that's what I was going for. So, we have professional units that offer shock damage plus 20%. We have the special one. Oh my god, that's expensive. Land maintenance plus 200%. But they get discipline army drill gain modifier morale and reinforcement speed that is really good i actually like the special one more than the professional one then we have the marines ignores crossing penalty uses sailors disembarkment speed plus 200 and no shock damage penalty that's pretty cool these uh, boys are the regular stuff and then these are the professional regiments again very interesting i like to see how they did this this is actually really really fun really makes the game a different branch of eu4 let's say it is not like the uh, base game but it is super fun so if you guys want to join me in my uh, little multiplayer with this mod you know what to do join the discord and if you want to see more videos like these and wonder what the world would be like in a different start date let me know in the comment section below if we get 10,000 likes i'll do another different start date maybe this time a little bit earlier than 2022 and until the next time check out this awesome burgundy video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support. 